the streets are full of them. Come on, divvy up, Tully. No dice. old man, your father would cop it. He's learning you to be nothing but a punk like him. He's learning me how to hustle. Oh, sure. Dodging truant officers, rolling drunks, lying to welfare workers. He's teaching you how to hustle, all right. Right into the electric chair. Sandy. Yeah, hold still. <laughs> Sandy. What is it? I want to buy him a bottle of bourbon. Bonded stuff. Not from me. Oh, come on, Sandy. You own this gin mill. You can do what you want. No dice. And I take my business to another joint. Go ahead. Can I wait here for him? You can wait here with me as long as you like. You know that, honey. My father told me why you collect these dolls. How would he know? He said you can't have kids of your own. Well, I'm gonna wait for him in the alley. We got a New Year's Day, 12 o'clock. Wait a minute, Tolly. I've got something for you. I've been trying to get it to you all week. I don't trust these characters around here. So I had a stash of real safe plays. Merry Christmas, Tolly. Well, go ahead and open it. Oh, yeah. you had being born in prison and mother dying there. want to live. Who's the guy? Why are you looking at me like that, huh? Ah! I understand, Sandy. Are you, uh, are you sure you didn't recognize any of the men? You didn't see him, I did. Do you 
know any of them, son? I'm no fink. You want us to get the men who killed your father, don't you? I don't want no help from you cops. I'm no cop. My name is Driscoll. I work for the district attorney. You still smell cop to me. I'll get those punks my own way. Mrs. Ferrari? Yes? I'm a friend of Vic's. You're a friend of Vic? Yes, ma'am. I got something for him. I'm sorry, Shorty. He ain't here. They slapped him in prison today. What for? An old rap. When will he come out? When he's dead. Vic Farage on this joint, is that right? For life. Mm -hmm. That's funny, I never see him around. He's been in the hospital for months. Yeah, what's wrong? Bum heart. Hmm. I used to know Vic when I was a kid. I think I'll pay him a visit. <laughs> Not in this chat, told you don't. He's in isolation. So I get sick. Not with Doc Meredith, you don't. Yeah, what will it cost me? A pint of red juice. What? You mean I got a blood bank in this joint, too? Hey, Doc. How do you get a job in this joint? Why? So you can get your hands on a little joy powder? I ain't no junkie. I didn't say you were. 
You know, I think I would have made a good doctor. If I only hadn't tried to make a buck the smart way. <laughs> Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, I've seen you somewhere. Save your wind for arm. Give me the chaplain's office, please. Oh, hello. This is Dr. Meredith. You better look in on Vic Farrar. He is going fast. <laughs> saw me before. I'm a dead ringer for my father. Tom Devlin. Devlin. Yeah. You beat him to death that night. You and your three pals. You remember, Vic? Forgive me. Forgive you? I gotta die with a clean slate. Who are the other guy? I'm no thing. You want to meet your maker with a clean slate, don't you? Yeah, yeah, huh? I got to Well, you're going to meet him in a couple of minutes. Now, you tell me who the other guys were, and I'll forgive you. And you'll meet your maker with a clean card. Promise? Sure, I promise. Who are they, Mick? Who are they, huh? Sheila. Sheila, yeah. Gunther, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smith. See the Gunther Smith. So long, Vic. Don't do this to me. Please, you promise. Forgive me. Forgive me. so happy about meathead <coughs> oh I'm just great, just uh, great. I didn't expect you here for an hour. I'd have died rather than you having to see me in this deshabille in the coiffure. Yeah. So why didn't you write me? You've been sick. Oh, huh? I'm in the pink of condition now that you're here. Uh -huh. See that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, back up. Huh? Back up. Well, well, well. Where did you steal the horse blanket? What do you mean, steal it? I made it in a pen. You what? Sure, helps rehabilitate us. Oh, but the tie stinks. Well, I didn't make that. Uh, 
Wait a minute. I got something for you. Here, look. Oops, hey. polka dots. Your favorite. Polka dots. Hey, who's sending you a gin mill? I sold it. Yeah? You get a good price? I had to take what Gila offered. You say Gila? That's what I said. Yeah, it must be someone I got the same name again. Oh. There's only one Mr. Gila, the dope king. Hey, you know, they're, um, they're using uh, coffee joints as fronts now. That's what my old bar is right now. A coffee house. No kidding. On the level. Oh, what characters. You know what they do? They just sit around and just drink coffee. coffee. Oh, but they still call it the elite. The elite espresso or espresso or whatever it is, but it's still the elite. Remember that guy from the DA's office? Uh, Driscoll. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You know, he tried to question you that night in the alley. You know, when you were a kid. Yeah, I remember Driscoll. Now, how about you? What? Well, have you got anything in mind in the way of a job? A job? Yeah, a job. It's a word. Meaning work. You know, legitimate work. Yeah, I got a job. Look, if you tell me you're gonna bust another safe, I'll kick you right out of this house, so help me. No, nothing like that. Uh, that's what I wanted to hear. For five years, I lost you in prison. And for five years, I've been praying that you learned a lesson. And you finally did. Yeah. Yeah, I learned a lesson. I learned plenty. What do you mean? I learned to kill my father. I finally caught up with Vic Farrar. Did you kill him? Didn't have to. He died in a prison hospital asking me to forgive him. And he named names. You want to know who they were? No. Huh? No, I don't want to know. know. I don't want to know. <laughs> there. There they are. That's my job. Gila, Gunther, Smith. Now, those are the three punks I'm gonna get. Punks? You call them punks? Why, they're better guarded than the President of the United States. And you're gonna get them? Oh, stop the crazy talk, man. Talk. I know it's been like a disease with you since you were a kid. But you're a grown-up man now. Act like it. Don't eat your heart out with hate and revenge. Look at you. 32 years old. And what have you done with your life? Nothing. One year in one prison, two years in another, the last rap, five years. Look, you're only on this earth once. So take advantage of it. Enjoy it. Live it. All I need is one break to get to Gila. And Gila uses your saloon to stash his dope, huh? Who knows? Could be.
Hello? Is Mr. Gila there? You better get word to Mr. Gila, the girl back down. She wouldn't make the pickup. Yeah, she's, she's still here with me. Uh, the key, I, I'll leave it on the shelf in the closet for you. What about the girl? Cuddles. Cuddles! Did he, did he get sore? Narcotics? I, I, I never pushed any of that stuff. Yeah? I'll tell the department to give you a soft knock if you cooperate. Honest, I, I, I don't know enough to make a trade with the law. You know where that fits, don't you? break. Don't, don't push me for names.
this is this? It's all right, lady. You're among friends. Why don't you take me to headquarters? I may not be safe there. We well, love might have a pipeline to the police. Oh. oh. He's not my lover. No, he's not your lover. Who is he? Hey, look. I, I don't want no more trouble. No. i done you a favor. You do me a favor. What's his name? Gus. Gus. What? Come on. How did he? What's his phone number? Well, mm -hmm. four. Four? Some wild milk, it's better than black coffee. Here, drink this. Who are you? Sandy. Thanks for letting me stay here. Huh? Oh, that's all right. He's nice for a cop. For a what? I'll fix up the couch for you. No bother. I'm going out. Where are you going? Look, let's have a little dose of straight talk right now, shall we? That, uh, Cuddle's character, who and what? She got in a jam. And you helped her out of it. That's right. Uh -huh. It's the first time you ever stuck your neck out for anybody. Well, you know me. I got a big heart. Who is she? Just a broad. You're telling me. And why did you bring her here? Yeah, it helps swing weight to fix things up. Why did you tell her you were a cop? I told you. It helps swing weight to fix things up. What things? She didn't want to make a junk pickup. Where did all this happen? <laughs> In a back room of the Elite Espresso, where they all they do is sit around and just drink coffee. You never handled a gun in your life. That's right. And what's this box of bullets doing here? <clears throat> Hello, Gus. Yeah, who is this? Gus, I'll sell you back that box of bullets. What are you talking about? Meet me in the alley at Elite Espresso in one hour. Hey, who is this? Come alone and bring 50 grand cash. 50 grand cash? Hey, listen, I can't... Asking for dough like that has got to get me to Chila. What did you cold cock me with? The phone. Where's the dough? You hung up on me before I could tell you that amount's tough to get this time of night. When can you get it? Tomorrow. I'll call you noon sharp. Now blow. All right. Where's the package? A bullet won't buy that cartridge box. I file faces and yours is familiar. Yeah, well, I've been around. You say you're a peat man? Yeah, that's my trade, yeah. Prove it. Prove it. You, uh, you heard the girl tell Gus she wouldn't make the pickup. Yeah, that's right. So you hit Gus and took the key. Yeah. How'd you get her to take you to the sports shop? Told her I was on a vice squad. 
She bought that? Yeah. Well, I had to rough her up a little bit. Where is she now? Oh, no, it's checked the hospitals. My talking stopping you from concentrating? Yeah. But not on this old box. I know this hole since I was a kid. Close it. So now you know I'm a peat man. What about the dough? Gunther? Ah, Penny Annie's stuff here. Smith still there? Yeah, he's still here. We could have had this meeting in my place, you know. Oh, mine. Yeah, I'm leaving right now. It's okay with him, Gus. Take care of the transfer. Oh, Mr. Gila, I'm sorry I called you away from your meeting. For 50 grand, you didn't have to bother me. Mr. Gila. Oh, I didn't know that package belonged to you. So now you know. Yeah. Now I know when the deal is off. Now don't push your luck. I may be a sentimental meathead. This time, this package on the house. On the house? Why on the house? Tom Devlin. Who? Tom Devlin. He was my father. I'm Tolly Devlin. Devlin, huh? Devlin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You used to work with him in the 30s, right? Now I know why you look so familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to work with him. I used to work with him. You and him was like brothers till my old man got bumped off. Who told you we were like brothers? Vic Farrar. I met him in a prison hospital. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from the old days, too. Mr. Jeeva, you know them four gunsels that bumped my father off? Yeah. They got paid off. Burned to death in a car wreck. Who told you that? Vic. Died in my arms in a hospital. I ain't taken no package from you. You trying to tell me that you're dumping 50 grand just because of sentiment? It would be like tapping my own father. Hello? It worked. I scored with Gila. Now keep that broad in the house. She's hot. Tolly. Tolly, wait a minute. Tolly. Tolly! Tommy. What do you mean he's no cop? He's a thief. And he just got out of prison. He used me to get his hands on that stuff, didn't he? He thinks his old man and I were blood brothers. So I put him out for a fast 75 a week as a numbers collector. Relax, relax. He's loaded with loyalty. Anyway, I'm running a check on him. The name Devlin still rubs me the wrong way. Well, uh, I'm a sentimental slob when it comes to loving a parent. I wish my kid felt about me the way Tolly feels about his old man. Hey, what's this? What? This report on the police chief, what is this? Oh, Chief Fowler. He wants me to lay off my houses for a few months. Why? He thinks someone in our camp is selling them out to Driscoll. Well, what are you paying him? 5,000 a week. That's a fat bonus for a police chief. That's more than I grease my union lobby gowns. He's worth it. 
We're clocking 100,000 a week in girls' numbers and distribution. Five grand's a bargain. Yeah, yeah, but maybe he's using Driscoll as an alibi. He's been trying to get out for months, you know that. No, I don't think so. Look, he's very close to his family. He's worried stiff about that daughter of his. Besides, I warned him he'd be putting her head on the block if he'd even try to think of crossing it. The syndicate bosses in the field command the rackets, like generals in the field command divisions. And lording it over the syndicate wheels is the top brass. The underworld's combined chiefs of staff. Each chief commands a specific department. Gila, narcotics. Gunther, labor, Smith, prostitution, and so on. They all have uh, substantial business fronts, pay taxes, wear respectable suits. And lording it over all of them is Earl Connors, their chief of staff. Shrewd, warm, charitable, an animal. He arbitrates the disputes between the syndicate bosses, pulls national strings, and controls gangdom from their headquarters at National Projects, a building only 20 minutes away from us, a beehive of concealed activity with a legitimate business facade from the basement to the penthouse executive offices. Now, the most vicious increase in vice is the teenage dope addict. And the recruitment of schoolgirls into the ranks of prostitution. They're using coffee houses and soda shops as fronts. The underworld is reaching the young people of this country. Our job is to get people to prosecute. <laughs> Getting anybody to talk is tough. Families of informers have been butchered, burned, bludgeoned to death. However, we have found a man who is not afraid. He's called Mencken. He works as a bookkeeper for national projects, and he has agreed to bring me evidence Earl Connors is paying Police Chief Fowler $5,000 a week bribery to permit local traffic in dope and girls. Connie, we've always leveled with each other. I'm washed up. What are you talking about? I've been on the take. I've been getting $5,000 a week for turning my back on dope traffic and prostitution. I'm sorry, Connie. I haven't got the stomach to face your mother. You'll have to. I'm not going to tell her. I don't know what you did with all that money, but you're going to have to tell her this yourself. Those lectures you gave the rookies every year, telling them that the lowest crook in the world is a crooked cop. Why did you do it? Why? Because they threatened to chop your mother to me, Grant, and send the pieces to me in a basket. That's why. You're alive. That's all that counts to me. You and mother are alive. Where are you taking him? To the federal building, Connie. Come on, Dad. Let's go. Tell mother I'll be down in a minute. We'll be waiting downstairs, Mr. Driscoll. I wish I had a daughter with her guts. You tell your story to the world, Bill, and a lot of frightened witnesses are going to crawl out from under their rocks. Are you crazy? Ten minutes before you get me on the stand, they'll chop her. I know how they operate, and so do you. No, John.
My family's dead while I'm alive. God, forgive me. Bill! <laughs> Devlin. Who? Dolly Devlin. From here on, can you make a pickup? Bring the money here immediately. Want that for each one? Yeah. Can't have our collectors walking around with a big bundle. It's always an invite. The lone wolf hijackers. Uh, what are you worried about? I got Gus with me. Uh uh. I've been making the rounds with you so the customers are getting to know you. Now you make your pickups alone. Devlin, here's tomorrow's route. Gus, Mr. Giel is looking for you. Come on, I'll give you a cook's tour of how the high restaurant works upstairs. Hey, what do you got us? Want to pull down there? Yeah. On a roof? Sure. Well, let's take a swim. Nope, it's just for the big wheels and underprivileged kids. Once every week, National Projects turns it over to them, and every month there's a swim meet. Well, Tolly. Oh, Mr. Tila. <laughs> Haven't seen you all week. Getting along okay? Well, yeah, they've been keeping me on the run, you know. Uh -huh. Hey, yes, sir. Nice suit you got. <laughs> Gus is Taylor. Uh, hey, uh, that, uh, that bookkeeper that dropped out of circulation. Menken? Yeah, Mr. Menken. Fine. See you, boys. Oh, and uh, as I was saying, the Chamber of Commerce gave us a plaque for sponsoring youth clubs. I even acted as lifeguard for the kids one day. I like that. Mankin's got to be the man. He was the only one who paid the chief every week, personally. What about his family? Not a trace. I just gave Gus the assignment. Send for the boys. Ask Smith and Gunther to come to the pool. Been on the phone to at least nine cities in the past hour. About Driscoll? No, oh, they know he's my headache. They're disappointed in your figures. I'm stretching the rubber band from coast to coast. I want to hear it snap. Now, there are at least uh, 13 million kids in this country between the ages of 10 and 15. Don't tell me the end of a needle has a conscience. Put more field men to work around the schools. Mr. Gunther? The Mr. means trouble. Real trouble. The Coast wants to know why you haven't made any headway with the longshoremen. Strong arm isn't helping the Teamster situation. It's the unions themselves. The locals are kicking our men out of office. Hello, Smith. Everybody's asking me about Driscoll. Think he's got a pipeline to the girls? Well, we don't know yet, but what we do know is that you showed a loss last month. 
St. Louis, Chicago, San Francisco, all show drops. Well, let's have another drink. Think I like sitting on you like this? I hate it. It's got to be done. But we won't stay big if we lose our grip. Now, there'll always be people like Driscoll. There'll always be people like us. And as long as we don't have any record on paper, as long as we run national projects, legitimate business operations, and pay our taxes on legitimate income, and uh, donate to charities and run church bazaars, we'll win the war. We always have. Oh, Jenny. Remember me? Boy, this is a nice bike. You're Jenny Minkin, aren't you? Yes. How did you know my name? Oh, I'm, I'm a friend of your daddy's. Say, uh, you haven't seen him today, have you? No. He went away on important business. Mommy's dead. Went away on business. Uh, do you know where he went? No. Say, would you uh, like some gum? Uh-huh. Oh, go on, take it. It's all right. I'm not a stranger. I'm a friend of your daddy's. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is Gus. I couldn't find Mr. Mencken, but his wife and two kids are living with his cousin. I just got through talking with his little girl. Well, the only way to keep Mr. Mencken's mouth shut is to teach him a lesson, get rid of that kid. She called a little while ago and said she'd call back and then hung up, asked for you. Well, why'd she leave? She got lonely. Lonely? What do you mean, lonely? She got a problem, so she got drunk. Problem? Everybody's got a problem. What kind of a problem? Yeah? Oh, wait a minute, honey. Yeah. The park, where lovers spark. Where are you? I got tired of wearing one dress, and I went back to my joint to pick up some of my gowns. Where are you? 
Ace Bar. But I'll meet you in the park. You stupid little broad, you get over here. Uh. What are you, nuts? Going back to your house like that for Pete's sake. Oh, well, now, why don't you suck on some ice? So be up. Come on. Don't pull Come me on. or I'll Come call on. the cops. I know. I'm drunk. <laughs> but my brain's okay. Clear as ice. Now, nobody saw me in that bar, will you? Quit worrying. Sandy told me what's eating you. I, I once saw a movie like that, all about revenge, ex-cons revenge. Very touching, close to home, huh? Only, only he was smart. Not like you, you're not smart. You know why you're not smart, Tolly? Because the day's gonna come when you want out. And the only way you're gonna get off their payroll is on a nice, big, cold, marble slab. You know how I know? Because I got one waiting for me. Yeah. You think Gus was gonna polish me off just because I didn't pick up that package? Uh-uh. Oh, I know too much. I know names and things. Like, for instance, I saw, I saw Mr. Smith Killadane. She was a hustler. Who was it, bra? You know, Tolly, I saw too much. And that old Gus, you would have killed me if it hadn't been for you. Sandy told me all about your old man, how he was a nothing, a real nothing. But to you, he was like a god. You must have an awful lot of love in you. Isn't there a story about a guy all alone in a desert for years and years and then he meets an ocean? I sure like the way you kiss. What's the name of that broad? A broad. A broad as Smith got rid of. Huh? Brother Smith got rid of him. Oh, brother. I really ran off at the mouth, didn't I? The story's on a level, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. There's a federal man named Driscoll. So? So he'll get rid of Mr. Smith for good. Is he one of the... wheels who killed your old man? That's right. And you want me to walk the plank so you can even the score? Mr. Driscoll will protect you like he was his own mother. I'm gonna have my head blown off. Not gonna be because you're on a revenge kick. The last few years, it seemed like somebody else was working the house. Like it was another person, not me. Oh. <laughs> Sure, like the way you kiss. Oh. What's the name of that broad again? He's got a wife and another child. Their lives won't be worth two cents if Connors finds them. Everybody on the police force trying to locate the Menken family. 
If only he'd try to contact us. He evidently has no idea that they'd be safer with us than wherever they're hiding. Well, with the murder of that child, it's, it's going to be impossible for any of our leads to testify now. Yeah? Dr. Driscoll. This is Driscoll. Oh, Mr. Driscoll, this is uh, Tolly Devlin. Who? Tolly Devlin. Tolly who? Tolly Devlin. Did you remember me? No. My old man was beaten to death in the alley you, you, behind Sandy's gin mill about 20 years ago. You remember that? I think you were with the DA's office then. Yeah. I was a kid who wouldn't think. I told you I'd get those punks in my own way. Don't you remember? Sure. I remember. You were the, uh, the kid who jumped on that morgue wagon. The kid who wouldn't think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've often wondered what happened to you. Well, I'm still around. Yeah, you, uh, you said you were going to find the man who killed your father. Yeah, I remember all right. Did you ever uh, get a lead on any of them? Yeah. One of them was Smith, the big wheel in prostitution. Give me that again. Mr. Driscoll, I know a girl who was eyewitness to Smith knocking off a broad. Will she testify? That's why I'm calling you. Well, bring her right over to my office. No, you gotta come here. Well, where are you? Yes, Smith shot Francie twice. You were an eyewitness. Well, yeah, that's what I just told you. What uh, prompted you to contact me? You don't think I'd stick my neck out just to see Smith burn, do you? I did it for Tolly. Would you please sign all three copies? Yes, sir. I get out a murder warrant right away for Smith's arrest. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for your courage. There aren't many citizens who will run this risk for society. Sucker. send out a dragnet for her throughout the country. I want every syndicate on the lookout for that girl. What about those lawyers on Driscoll's staff? Maybe we can reach one. You know, make a deal. You can't trust any of them. If there is any additional evidence, we got to get it even if we have to break into his file. Jill is working on that already. Will you get that? Yeah? It's Jeeva. Now maybe he's made a contact. Hello. I got a man who will crack Driscoll's safe. Good. I suggest for the present, that we uh, keep it strictly to ourselves, huh? I agree. Well, Tolly, if you come up with the reports we want, it'll mean an additional thousand dollars for you. Yeah. Well, it ain't just the money, Mr. Tila. I mean, you know, I can get a thousand years for cracking a government safe, you know. I'm like a future with your organization. I, well, I don't know. I kind of always wanted some kind of security. That's the spirit I like. Don't let anything interfere with them. Oh, is he going to tag along? What's that? Oh, no, nothing. Nothing personal to Gus. It's just that when I operate, I like to operate alone, you know. I, uh, well, that way I can, I can 
Concentrate? Yeah, concentrate. That's understandable. Leave him alone. Thank you, Mr. Teeter. But stick close to him. I uh, arranged for the guards to be off duty tonight, all except one man. Uh, was your friend Gus suspicious? No, no, no. He, you, uh, you didn't make much sense when you phoned me tonight about this job. Did you say Gila hired you to crack my safe? Yeah, that's right. Uh, listen, I've been thinking of something. I got an idea. Yeah? You remember what you said to Cuddles about uh, getting a... Cuddles? Yeah, Cuddles, the broad is going to sing on Smith. You said something to her about uh, getting a dog fight started between the bosses. Yeah. What about giving me a bone to take to Gila? You mean a phony report? Why not? Joseph, Wilhelm, Gunther. Back to be turned over to committee Monday. You turn these reports over to Gila. I'm counting on all hell breaking loose against Gunther and his racket bosses. U.S. District Attorney Report File 5866, confidential. Thursday, 11 p.m. Gunther agrees to deliver narcotics data in exchange for limited immunity. Facts to be turned over to a committee Monday. It's the day after tomorrow. I still can't believe it. I thought you got a tail on Driscoll. I have, but he must have lost it. Uh, Mr. Gunther, please. Yes, I'll hold on, thank you. Your man, what's his name? Tolly, Tolly Devlin. Did a good job. Tolly. Yes, sir. Put this back in Driscoll's safe. Take Gus's car. Yes, sir. You come with me. Gunther, Connors, come over to my house right away. You work with a man for 30 years. You know him for 30 years. It doesn't mean a thing. My closest sidekick ready to sell me out. <laughs> What happened? What's the matter? Why the SOS this time of the night? If I hadn't seen the proof with my own eyes, I'd never have believed it. What proof? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the fat bulk of double-crossing blubber who made a deal to save his own fat skin. You must be crazy! <laughs> You stuck your neck out for me, that's why. 
I wouldn't be kept by you if you gave me a million dollars. Oh, wait a minute, honey. I don't mean walk the streets or work a house. I'm talking about giving you a break. I'm going to set you up. You know what you can do with that break. Wait a minute. Hey. You are a mixed up broad. All right. I'm a mixed up broad. So what? So don't fly up the handle when somebody's trying to do something for you. Do something for me? Do what? You don't have to con me. I made my pitch. You didn't buy it. How do you know what's inside me? Because I know what's wrong with you. I don't care. You hear me? I don't care. I know. The day will come when you won't get your kicks from me anymore. You want to go out and get yourself a new <laughs> It's kind of a low blow, I'm sorry. You like your way of turning a buck. How's wrong needling you? No. No. You're right. All my life, it's, it's been near misses with every guy. Until I... More than that now. Now I, I, I know something I, I never thought I'd know. We got a right to climb out of the sewer and live like other people. We could start from scratch. Make every minute count twice for the one we lost. We're our way of turning a buck. I want your kids, Tolly. I want you for my... my husband. You must be on a needle. woman can tell the whole truth about herself to a man, but that broad did. What is this with marriage and kids? Are you kidding with her? Oh, come on. Look. Why don't you take a good look at yourself? Look, Sandy, don't start, don't, don't. What do you see? A doctor? A scientist? A businessman? You see a scar-faced ex-con. A two-bit safe cracker. A petty thief who don't know when he really made the big time. Where do you come off to blast her? No matter what she's been, what she's done, she's a giant. And you want to know why? Well, I'll tell you. Because she sees something in you worth saving. If only one-tenth of one percent of all the good in her could rub off on you, you'd be a giant too. But you're a midget. In your head, in your heart, in your whole makeup. You're a midget. before. How do you feel, Colonel? Well, 
some women, when they kiss, blush. Some call the cops, some swear, some bite, some laugh, some cry. Me, I die. Die. I die inside when you kiss me. Wants wants me to deliver any reports to him first, not to let Sheila know. Good. Now there's no one he can trust. Are you ready? No. For the next few nights, tell him uh, you found nothing in my safe. Why? Make him sweat. Yeah, but we ought to get Sheila as soon as possible. We'll get him. We'll get him. I got to figure out a different angle. Repeating the same frame up so soon might make him suspicious. You see what I mean? Well, yeah, huh? leave it to Uncle Sam. Confidential from Driscoll. Wednesday, 2 a.m., meeting with Gila. Saturday, 10 p.m., meeting with Gila. Sunday, 4 p.m., meeting with Gila. Monday, meeting with Gila. You brought this report directly to me first, is that right? Yes, sir. You say your name is Tolly? That's right. Tolly Dublin, sir. Good work, Tolly. Put this back in Driscoll's safe. Tell Barney to tell Gila round the clock. And make sure he personally gives me an hour to hour report on Gila. saying. What'd he say? I'm at the pool, all right? Gila's in the pool with one of his punks. You got the picture? Gila's in the pool with one of his punks. No, he's not, no, he not in the pool. He's too drunk to be in the pool, but he's at the pool. All right, Gila's yeah. at the yeah. pool. 
I hear him say to this punk that if he thought he could get a short sentence, he'd make a deal with you as long as nobody knew he did the singing. Judas said that? That's what I heard him say. I won't bruise you. Not here. Relax, Danny. Okay, Mr. Gila. What are you prowling around here for? I wanted you to know I... Uh, I understand your feelings. Now get out of here. Got to be sure. When I drove past him, my lights picked up his face. It was big as life, close to my car. That guy was Driscoll, all right. Find Gus and send him here. You want me to keep on Gila's tail tonight? No, it won't be necessary. You know what's up. Phone Gila to home right now. Tell him you got some reports out of Driscoll's safe. He'll ask you to bring him over right away. It's about 11 now. He'll expect you at 11.30. Only you won't be there. I'll be there for you. This is Tolly. Oh, hello, Tolly. Good, good. Bring him right over. Take about a half hour. I'll let you in myself. Reports for me? Mr. Tito, when I was a kid, I seen a messy thing. I seen four shadows on a wall kill a guy. You know, I never could rub that out of my mind. Because the guy was my old man. Hmm. That's right. You know, it took me 20 years to find the faces of them shadows, but I found them. The first guy. He conked out in a hospital asking me to forgive him. Vic Farrar. <laughs> Get in the chair. Smith. <laughs> the third one, he got barbecued. Gun. Mr. Gila. 
that you you wrap up the package. That's Gus. I set you up for a hit. It's the only way I could even up. You paid our light bills around here. How you doing? not the only one with ideas, you know. I got ideas, too. You made your point. Quitting our way of turning a buck, I buy. But I don't buy it alone. I gotta have a partner. Like Sandy said, the only good partnership is between the man and wife. What are you getting at, Tolly? Man, I want you to be my wife. No, everything that goes with it. Outside wants to see you. His name is Tolly Devlin. He's here? He wants to see you alone. Well, uh, tell him to come on in. All right, everybody. Let's take a ten minute break. Stop by your house. They tell me you're working late. Are you crazy? What are you doing here? Gila's dead. Did you kill him? Nah. Who did? How do you know he's dead? He's dead. And you uh, set him up, didn't you? What difference did that make? Mr. Disco? It's been a good partnership. But with Gila and I set, wraps it up and you're on your own. Come on. Our job isn't finished yet. Mine is. Tolly, you've got a perfect pipeline to Connors. Connors, what do I care about Connors? That's your headache. Well, what are you going to do now? I'm going to get married. I'm going to get married and I'm going to dump my trade. What about Connors? I'm going to dump him, too. I'm going to start from scratch, me and my broad. Oh. What? Don't you think I can turn a buck the right way? Of course you can, and I'll help you get started. But right now, don't run out on me, Tully, until we get Connors. You got cops? You use them, all right? You can't quit him, not while he's top butcher, and you know it. I know one thing. I'm getting out of this. He'll place. never buy it. Tolly, you'll never be able to start from scratch unless you help us put Connors out of the way. You'll buy it. You'll buy it. I'll tell him I'm hot. You'll tell me to get lost. And tell your bride to wear black.
Yeah. Come on over here. And uh, please, please hurry. Yeah, right after I see Connors. Listen to me. The best time to check out is right now. He's always relaxed when he's in the pool. You gotta listen to me. Love you, doll. Tolly. Tolly. What's up? Here, that's for you. I got my own. What's this for? You know that bookkeeper, Mencken, who bribed the police chief? Yeah. This kid was killed by a hit and run? Yeah, I read about it. I ran it down. I just found out where he sold up. So what's the gun for? Connors wants me to break you in, see how you operate. We're gonna wipe out Mencken, his wife, and his other kid. Oh, and Cuddles. Mr. Connors tells me she's the broad that sang on Smith. Yeah? Yeah. Driscoll's got her stashed away somewhere. But she'll get it like Gunther got it, like Gila got it. Man like Connors, everything goes. After these hits, there won't be a rubber lip left in the country who'll sing to Driscoll. And uh, if you show any professional ability tonight, Mr. Connors may give you the crack to polish off Cuddles. Who knows? Let's go. That's Connor's car, and Gus's car right behind it. It's crazy to be in this neighborhood.
already up there. They find you here, they'll kill you too. <laughs> You've got a job to do. You've got to sing on Smith. I don't care about Smith. You've got to finish the job for Tali. Or he died for nothing. Come on. 